I mean, really, what we're dealing with here is the, the origin of animals. According to the fossil record, animals appeared upon the Earth in a short burst around 570 million years ago. Scientists call this crucial transformation the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion was effectively one of the greatest breakthroughs in the history of life. About half a billion years ago, suddenly things change. And we have this extraordinary explosion of diversity. And this sudden appearance of the fossils led to this term, the Cambrian Explosion. And Darwin, as ever, was extremely candid. He said, look, this is a problem for my theory. How is it that suddenly animals seem to come out of nowhere? And to a certain extent, that is still something of a mystery. Most of what we know of the Cambrian Explosion is a result of a single discovery, probably the greatest fossil find in history. In 1913, while climbing in the Canadian Rockies, paleontologist Charles Walcott discovered a layer of shale containing thousands of exquisitely detailed fossils. These animals, all sea dwellers, were caught in a catastrophic underwater mudslide. Over the next 500 million years, the seafloor which entombed them rose to become the top of a mountain. Walcott removed over 60,000 fossils from the site, which he named the Burgess Shale. Simon Conway Morris has studied the fossils for over 30 years. It's almost as if you've gone to another planet, you've been given a fishing boat and a net, and you've been allowed to throw that net over into the deep ocean, and you had no idea what was going to come up. Some of the Burgess Shale creatures were familiar. And here we've got one of the trilobites. We see the delicate soft parts also preserved. Trilobites are extinct arthropods, creatures with external skeletons. Today's arthropods, like crabs, lobsters, insects and spiders, are all descendants of creatures like these. Other Burgess Shale animals were bizarre, alien-seeming. An animal with five eyes and a long, retractable nozzle. One with long, sharp spines protruding from its back. Another with a circle of prongs around its mouth. And yet, as alien as these creatures seem, they are also surprisingly familiar. Like living animals, they have bodies with heads, tails, appendages. Specialized segments performing specialized functions. All the basic body plans found in nature today are here. Every animal that has lived for the last half billion years has come from tinkering with these initial designs. We might even see our own ancestor here. And maybe this is the crown of the Burgess Shale. This is Bikaya. A tiny creature, Bikaya is one of the rarest fossils from the Burgess Shale. It's the only one with an internal nerve cord resembling a spine. That might mean that creatures like Bikaya were the earliest ancestors of all animals with skeletons. The idea is that this might be the precursor of the fish and so ultimately, through a long evolutionary story, ourselves. Why does the Cameron explosion matter? It matters for lots of reasons. And basically, it's part of our history. It's where we came from and that matters very much. This is the time when the animals first appear. We look back and we can see part of our history unfolding. So what do we learn by looking at 600 million years of animal history? Evolution's tinkering with mammalness to make whales. In the same way, it's tinkering with fishiness to make tetrapods. And it's tinkering with animalness to make all the different body plans that we see. All these different creatures are variations of the same theme, restated over and over again. The question was, what was evolution tinkering with? 
One of the remarkable discoveries of the last 20 years is that evolution is not tinkering with the bodies. It's tinkering with the recipe, the machinery that builds bodies. What is that recipe? What is that machinery? It's the genes. Fossils record the changes in animals' bodies over time. But just how bodies change was unknown. The search for the genetic mechanism of evolution took most of the century. When scientists finally found it, they were astonished by just how simple it was. One of the key players was Mike Levine. I was, um, I guess, kind of a weird kid. I always liked bugs. We had a nice big backyard. And I could go back there. It was kind of a sanctuary. And uh, I played with bugs, dissected them, manipulated them. That's really the most pleasant memory I have. Levine's affinity for bugs led to his study of biology. One insect in particular became an object of fascination. They have a quick generation time, and they have lots of pattern. I mean, you wouldn't know it if you look at a distance, but when you look under a uh, a microscope at an adult fruit fly, you'd be astounded by the, the number of bristles, the intricacies of their wings, the, the, the patterns of their eyes. But the embryos are something else. I do love the embryos. Scientists had long suspected that embryos held clues to how animals evolve. All embryos start out as clusters of nearly identical cells. But soon, an embryo partitions itself into specialized segments, which develop into the final form of the animal. What controlled this process? How did the embryos know what shape to take? One of the first people to study these questions was a 19th century naturalist named William Bateson. Bateson wrote that animal skeletons revealed an underlying structure of repeating segments. He also observed that animals occasionally developed with some segments in the wrong places. Insects with legs in the wrong place, crabs where a claw was transformed into a leg, pythons with extra ribs or frogs with extra cervical vertebrae and all these sorts of things. To Bateson, these developmental errors meant that the underlying blueprint for the animal was being disrupted. He had no idea how it happened, but he suspected that these random changes might provide the fuel for evolution. By the 1940s, scientists working with fruit flies had learned how to cause disruptions in the developmental blueprint by dousing growing embryos with radiation and poison. And so when they did that, they found flies with changed wing structures, changed legs, and these very special flies that have one part of the body in the wrong place, or a copy of a normal part of the body in another place. The scientists had triggered the changes by damaging the fly's DNA. Within each cell of the developing embryo is a chain-like molecule called DNA. The experiment showed that DNA was somehow causing the embryo to divide into segments. But how? Scientists were just beginning to grasp that the DNA itself was made up of segments, called genes. The question was, how did the genes shape the body? 